Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks in-person, hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, so we just did a class on AI and SQL. We're going to have a class on AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. If you're interested, take a look at silicondojo.com to see what our schedule is. They are in-person classes before you RSVP. Do remember, free the user is not actually free. That's why I shake my nip nips for you every day. If you want to help support the project, there's a donor box link down below. And so with that, um, yeah, good news, everybody. Good news. It appears, it appears, uh, 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 Lutnik, Lutnik will be excited about this. Apparently, the United States is going to be getting the second best AI technology in the world. Yay. Because apparently that's how shit works nowadays. Uh, 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 on the face of it, on the face of this, normally, this particular article, I actually wouldn't care that much about. It's like, okay, TSMC is creating a new uh, 1.4 nanometer uh, uh, fab, uh, basically in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, again, on the face of it, yeah, good for them. I don't know. We'll see what the, we'll see what the uh, chips are like when they start coming out in a little while. What I find fascinating with this, though, is uh, Trump, the Trump administration's massive push to basically uh, reshore or shore whatever, uh, wafer production uh, into the United States. So uh, TSMC and NVIDIA, they just started producing wafers in one of their Arizona fabs. And one of the curious things here is there's been this massive push to make sure uh, that the United States can produce uh, these wafers and these chips. And what's curious here is it appears that the real investment is still going into Taiwan. So we, in the United States, we are going to be producing better chips than we previously previously did, but even with everything the Trump administration has been doing, they are still going to be subpar compared to what Taiwan can actually produce. And so at the end of the day, we may have, we may have more resilience, may, to be clear, may have more resilience uh, with our chip production capabilities, but it looks like we will always be second best to Taiwan, which is just kind of a weird thing. Again, you think about the Trump administration, think about how they've been pushing all this kind of stuff for fabs and that. And it's just weird that this is currently coming out. Uh, so anyways, TSMC, whoops, here we go. Uh, so you can see. TSMC initiates work on the, quote, world's most advanced chip fab worth a whopping 48.5 billion US dollars for high-end 1.4 nanometer process. So under the Trump administration, the world's most advanced chip fab Oh, we'll be built in Taiwan. <laughs> we'll be built in Taiwan. Which, again, if it wasn't the Trump administration, I wouldn't think much about it. But it is the Trump administration, so it's just, it's just kind of curious uh, to currently see that. Uh, TSMC has showcased the firm's, quote, most cutting-edge facility in Taiwan, which will be responsible for the production of the Angstrom-era A14 1.4 nanometer process. The Taiwan chip giant has been evolving at a rapid pace in terms of technology innovation. Although it is still in the 3 nanometer node timeline, the firm has already initiated work on the advanced 1.4 nanometer node, indicating its commitment to the industry, according to a report by the Taiwan. Taiwan Economic Daily, TSMC had, has begun construction on the 1.4 nanometer facility in the central Taiwan city of Taichung. Uh, the project is estimated to cost $48.5 billion, with production expected to commence by 2028. Interestingly, the fab being discussed here was initially intended to be a 2 nanometer facility, <coughs> but TSMC revised its plans, uh, bumping up the production to an Angstrom era level. The reason behind this move is that the Taiwan giant intends to populate a significant portion of its 2 nanometer production lines in the U.S. given the massive demand the firm sees from HPC and mobile customers. Essentially, TSMC plans to retain cutting-edge technology production in Taiwan while increasing capacity of older nodes in overseas facilities to meet the requirements of its clients. So again, this could be considered a good thing. Dep depending on the Rorschach test that you are taking, this could be considered a, new, a good thing, right? They are going to be doing more and more production of two nanometer wafers in the United States. And so that increases our, our silicon production capacity in the United States. On the other hand, the really valuable stuff, the really cutting edge stuff, is still staying in Taiwan, which means it's still going to be vulnerable to China and the rest of it, which is, you know, it's just kind of curious there. The 1.4 nanometer facility will house <coughs> four different fabs, uh, with the first one coming on <coughs> online by the end of 2027, with initial mass production numbers claimed to be around 50,000 wafers. The demand for the uh, eight 
A14 node will primarily be driven by Apple, Qualcomm, and MediaTek, as well as mobile customers. However, HPC clients such as NVIDIA and AMD will also play a key role, utilizing the node for their next generation AI architectures. So there we go. We're going down to the 1.4 nanometer process. How much does this actually matter? I do actually wonder at this point in time. I'm not trying to poo-poo the nanometers, but this has been a big thing, right? They went from the 14 nanometer and they've gone down to like seven nanometer and then three nanometer, and then two nanometer. Basically it's smaller and smaller and smaller, the, the components uh, on the CPUs and the wafers themselves. I do wonder, I do wonder from a practical standpoint, when 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 does the technology start plateauing so even even if the technology is technically better uh, from a practical standpoint uh, it doesn't really matter right it, mi it might matter in big supercomputers it might matter in very advanced systems for you know military or whatever else uh, i do wonder at this point in time how much it's going to be matter it's going to matter uh, for most consumers and most people that are using these products is this is, is is this the thing that's going to be like what's really valuable we've talked about that before like with china like right now in the united states we have a big backlog for actually being able to deploy GPUs. I, I was surprised. I was literally shocked when Satya, Satya Nadella, uh, CEO of Microsoft, came out and literally said they have GPUs sitting on the shelf because basically in warehouses, because they are not able to spin up those GPUs because there's not elect enough electricity and enough facilities, right? That basically we, we are now to the point where we are producing more silicon that then can actually be deployed into real world environments. And that's where I, I wonder with a lot of this stuff is are we focusing on the wrong things, right? They talk about that with China, right? China is behind us. What, what we're told is Huawei's GPUs consume twice as much power as Nvidia's and that's why they suck and that's why they're behind. On the other hand, uh, they're producing more and more uh, <clears throat> uh, electricity uh, plants to be able to provide more and more electricity uh, for their society. And so the fact of the matter is, is even though their chips require twice as much electricity, they have, they have so much electricity to access from a functional standpoint that's not holding them back, right? They want more efficiency. It's always better to be more efficient, but it's not actually stopping them. One of the things that I wonder about, again, with it, with, with the United States is we're doing so bad with infrastructure is are we going to be getting more and more advanced technology that we are functionally unable to deploy because our core infrastructure uh, is so, is so basically piss poor at this point in time, right? You can have, you can have the best computers in the world. Like how, how many people have done projects where you know you have the contract you buy all the hardware and then the hardware is sitting in your little inventory area or your warehouse for a while because the customer's building hasn't been built right has, has anybody else had tens of thousands of dollars in hardware literally just collecting dust because because the the construction has not been finished uh, on the uh, in the environment that the systems are supposed to go into Right. And that's that's a lot of my concern with what's currently going on is I think there's so there's so much focus on hardware. There's so much focus on coding. There's so much focus on the sexy stuff. Right. We're not we're not focused on electricity grid and water supplies and cement and steel and all of that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, it'll be curious to see uh, where this all flushes out at the end of the day. I, the, the big thing with this, I just think it's kind of curious, is the fact that their most advanced fab is still going to Taiwan, which, to be clear, makes complete sense from TSMC's point standpoint, right? I completely understand why they're doing that. But when you look at what the Trump administration has been pushing for, are we really, are we really getting to where we think we're going? Things are improving, maybe. Things may be improving, but is, is, the improve, is the improvement to the degree we think we're actually getting? I don't know. That's going to be a question. So what do you think? Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and put a strong American comment down there. I expect your comment to have a thumb on it the way our cows do. Anyway, so sad. The reason I keep giggling over that joke is it just kind of sounds so appropriate. Come on, come on now. If you're an American and you saw a whole bunch of dairy cows walk by 
and they had thumbs on them. And you know, you'd be like, oh, man. <laughs> science experiment, science experiment. Anyways, I do remember what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo, SiliconDojo.com, free to you. And use your hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do. We just had a class on AI and SQL. We're going to have a class on AI and web scraping coming up. After that, we're going to have a class on AI or extending AI capabilities using REST APIs. Anyways, uh, though that class schedule can be found uh, at SiliconDojo.com. Do remember that... Um, uh, free to end user is not actually free. That's why I shake my brain nip nips every day. If you'd like to throw some money into the donor box link down below, that would be ever so lovely. And with that, see y'all later.